All right, welcome back, dudes. It's been a while since we've had an episode of Minecraft Therapy, but here we are, back in the wonderful world of Minecraft. As you may notice, this is a new world. It's a new chapter for the channel and for my life, so I figured we start with a new world. The old world's kind of getting kind of boring anyway, so <laughs> start a new world, and hopefully we can have a fun time adventuring here and talking through some of life's biggest um, challenges and opportunities. Let's frame it in a positive way. <laughs> anyway, yeah, today I want to talk about some of the adventures, adventures in quotation marks, more like times I was crying in the library I had <laughs> during my sophomore year at Stanford. And also kind of give you guys some just general college life advice so you don't repeat the same mistakes I had during my sophomore year. Because sophomore year, I would say, it was probably the uh, the toughest. It's Either freshman or sophomore year was the toughest for me. Sophomore year was probably the most boring year for me. So I'll give you guys some advice so you, don't, you guys don't have the same issues I did. Before we get into that, let's do some housekeeping real quick. If you guys want to just listen to me here, talk about Stanford, though, you guys can skip ahead in the video I'll leave a link you know in, in the video to, to skip ahead but I want to talk about some other stuff first um what do I want to talk about I'm back to New York so that's good and I'm going to be trying to put out some more uh content just trying to really put out some more content about Stanford about um just some random topics I want to rant about so like I don't know, like my feelings about how New York is changing or like my feelings about, I don't know, how society is moving in this weird world where like, you know, I feel like society is changing pretty dramatically. You know, Putin's getting all up in that business. So if you don't hear from me, that might be because I got drafted and I'm in Kiev, you know, with the boys. But yeah, I'll be trying to put out some more content. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, showing some more of my face because I didn't feel comfortable showing my face while I was at my previous job, but now that I've left that job, I'm going to be seeing my, my beautiful face more. <laughs> and what else? Yeah, just making some more content. So if you guys have ideas for Stanford videos, please leave a comment and let me know what you guys would like to see because, you know, I'm probably make some bit more tier lists about like, you know, um, like places to live at Stanford tier lists and like, I don't know, more classes tier lists and just give my random thoughts about Stanford and whatever, whatever, because those vids get the views. So if you guys want videos on that topic or really any topic, just leave a comment and I will do it. I know people have left comments on what Stanford videos they'd like to see like two years ago when I actually made more Stanford content and I ignored you guys because I was really stressed and busy with my life. but. I really will do it this time. All right, cool. Anything else? I don't think so. That's enough housekeeping. Let's get into the actual topic of this video because that intro is way too long. So, entering sophomore year was a pretty interesting time for me because I basically had no friends, uh, no work experience, and I was just kind of, it was kind of just like a really another freshman year part two for me. <laughs> Um, because of like some personal stuff from my freshman year, I was just going through a really hard time and I didn't really have the opportunity to make a lot of friends because I was just kind of in my dorm suffering a lot <laughs> during that time. Um, and that's really, you know, that, that was a tough time for me, but yeah, I didn't really have a chance to make too many friends and, uh, I didn't get a job during that summer either because also because of the stress I was kind of going through. Normally, you know, Stanford people are very uh, motivated and they'd be grinding that shit and they'd be having summer internships. But what I didn't realize was that you had to apply for these summer internships like winter quarter, like way before summer. Like if you were applying to summer internships like, you know, a month before summer, that was like too late, it felt like to me. So like summer, the summer after my freshman year like kind of came around and I was like, oh damn, like I don't have an internship and it's too late for me to do this. So I just went back to New York. I did some tutoring to get some like side money, 
But yeah, going into the freshman, going into a uh, sophomore year, didn't really have um, any friends. Like I said, um, yeah, that was really it. I I was kind of afraid during my freshman year to put myself out there. So I guess if that's I can start with that. That's the piece of advice I would give. Damn, look at this. Look at this crazy view of this forest. That's some advice I would give, which is that mm, try not to be afraid to put yourself out there, which I know is a lot easier said than done. But yeah, I don't know. I've said a lot about how I kind of dislike my experience at Stanford and most people at Stanford were fake. But that being said, I did eventually find some real homies at Stanford. And I think at any place, even if you hate the place and you think the majority of people there suck, guess what? You're probably not alone in thinking that and you can find some like-minded people like you who you can kind of make it through <laughs> um, the, the bad times with. And I think that's really important. I don't think I would have survived Stanford if I hadn't met the friends I met um, during my sophomore year, which I'll talk about later. So yeah, I'd advise that. Um, yeah, going into sophomore year, I was assigned to live in GovCo, which is not one of the ideal places to live on campus. I don't think I had a high draw number. So if you don't go to Stanford, real quick, the draw is basically the system with which Stanford um, students get assigned housing, which I actually think they changed recently. And I might make a video about that, ranting about that. So if you want to see a video about that, and me ranting about the new Stanford residential system, which I think still has flaws, leave a comment. But yeah, basically the way the draw works was that you got a random number, and based on that number, if you got the number of one, you would be the first person to be assigned housing, so you'd get your first choice. If you were assigned the number 1,000, you would you know, be the thousandth person picking. And I don't think I had a good number. I ended up, yeah, initially getting uh, one of the houses in Governor's Corner, aka GovCo, which is like way off on West Campus. It's basically close to um, Frosico, and yeah, I was like, damn. I remember going to the, when, once you get assigned to housing, you go to that specific um, place to get assigned rooms. And I remember going there and sitting in the common area with everyone, like waiting to be assigned our rooms. And I was like, damn, am I really gonna have to bike all the way out here <laughs> to like live in this like just average looking dorm? Because like, it wasn't anything like special, you know, it was just like, it's just like a normal ratty Stanford dorm. If anything, it was like kind of on, on you know, I wouldn't say it's on the older side, but it was definitely like very medium. And I was like, mm, I don't know if this is it, chief. So yeah, that was that. But little known hack, you can reassign, or maybe it's not a little known. A known hack is that you can reassign to different housing. So that is what I did. I have a summer... After my freshman year, after I got assigned to uh, GovCo, I went in the little Stanford portal and reassigned and was like, please give me a new place to live. And I got reassigned to Kimball, which was in a much more desirable location. Um, so that was good. Issue there was that I had drawn by myself. So normally at Stanford, um, hold on, this ambience. All right, let's decrease that, yeah. Normally at Stanford, you can draw in groups, so that that way, uh, most of the rooms at Stanford are two room, you know, are you live with a roommate, so normally people draw with their friends so that they're not living with a stranger. I had no friends coming out of freshman year, so I was gonna be living with a stranger. And so when I got assigned to Kimball, that was me knowing that I was gonna have a random roommate in Kimball. Um, so I got to Kimball my first day of sophomore year and I just got assigned this random room and I went in there and I met my roommate and he was a pretty cool guy. He was on the rowing team and, or he used to be on the rowing team. I think, I think something happened, but whatever, something happened and he's no longer on the rowing team, but, um, what's it? Yeah. We, we had a pretty fine, decent time with each other. Nothing crazy happened between us. The one thing I regret is that sometimes I forgot that I had a roommate. And as I'll describe later, I used to go to the gym 
um, at night at Stanford, and then when I would um, come back, it would be like 11 or 12 at night, and I would forget that I had a roommate, and then I would be like listening to like some random, or watching some random shit on my phone like really loud, and then once my roommate came out and he was like, dude, can you turn that off? And I was like, OMG, I'm so embarrassed. But yeah, that was that. We had a pretty chill time, and yeah, nothing was nothing was too too crazy there. The other thing about um, living with a roommate was that I got assigned the outer room of the. So we we had a two room double, which meant basically we had two separate rooms in our room. But you know, when you walk into a room, there's the outer room and then the inner room. And I had the outer room, which meant that I, you know, that was definitely not ideal because I didn't have the most um, privacy. So then I devised this weird system where, like, I slept on the floor and, like, draped, like, a bed sheet over the frame of the bed frame so that I could, like, go into my little cave to, like, you know, relax if I didn't want to, like, be watched or, like, you know, have someone walk on in on me, like, all the time. I really don't want to die in this game, so let's run out here and build a random hut for ourselves. Um, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Okay, let's burrow into the ground here. But yeah, I had the outer room. I would recommend, if you know, getting the inner room if you are gonna if you're gonna live with someone at your college because you just get you know. You don't have to worry about someone walking in on you all the time and, like, having to explain while you're watching, you know, weird anime videos on, on your laptop. Not that I watched any weird anime videos. Not that, you know, I'm judging you guys if you do. Um, yeah. All right. What else? So, yeah, sophomore year is the year I kind of got serious about graduating, um... Stanford in three years. My freshman year was, as I said, kind of rough for me. And because of that, by the time sophomore year rolled around, I was like, you know what? Screw this. I'm going just, to just figure my shit out so I can get out here early. So the summer before... Um, summer before... Fresh, or summer before sophomore year, I got my shit together... I researched all the classes that I would need to graduate, and I made this whole plan. I was like, all right, if, if I want to graduate in three years, I got to max out my units every quarter and, like, really Tetris this shit up so that I can, you know, fit the classes together such that I perfectly max out the number of units per quarter and also hit all the required classes. So that took a bit of planning, but sophomore year, I was like, fuck it. Let's full send it. Um, yeah. One piece of advice I would have is even if you're not going to try to graduate in three years like an insane person, I would still recommend that if you have classes that you try to stagger your classes. And what do it, And by that, I mean if you have like, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday classes. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's never going to happen. If you have Monday, Wednesday Friday classes, try to make it so that all your classes fall on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, because then you can have Tuesday and Thursday off, and it really does help to, like, have that, like, mental load taken off of, like, having an entire day free, you know, even if you have, like, one class, like, it's still, like, you know, mentally, you're like, oh, I gotta go to class, it's, like, just a weird chunk of your day that you have to, like, plan around. And if you can't have it so that, you know, an entire day is off, like say you have Monday, you stagger most of your classes on uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but you have still some on Tuesday and Thursday, try to make it so that those classes are in the morning because if you can get it out of the way in the morning, then the entire rest of your day is free versus, you know, if you have a class at 3 p.m. on a Tuesday and that's your only class, it's kind of weird because you're like, well, I got to like go to class at 3 p.m. At least for me, that's how I felt that, um, that's how I felt was, was a good system for me. And that, that, yeah, that worked for me because yeah, with those days off, I could rest, I could just, or I could get in the total focus zone of working on some P sets or whatever. So do that. That's a good idea. Um, 
yeah, so, like I said, I had no friends <laughs> during my sophomore year, so it was basically just me and my classes, and I kind of went hard on those. Um, yeah, one of the classes that destroyed me, um, my, my winter, not winter, my autumn quarter at Stanford, fall quarter, was CS110. God damn, CS110. That class, I don't even really remember anything I learned in that class. Um, there's coal right here when I just made all that charcoal. God damn it. I don't really remember anything from CS110. CS110 was like CS107 part two, basically, which, which was like, you know, just like system stuff. Um, so like, I don't know, we learned like, see, I, I can't even describe to you what I learned. The only thing I remember learning was that the final project was that we built something called MapReduce, which was like some like algorithm to reduce the size of something. Like I, I'm literally trying my hardest to remember what that class was about and I can't remember it. So maybe I'll put some stuff on top of this part of the video to explain what that class was about. I'm really trying to remember. We we learned just like oh we learned like some shit like thread pools, like threading on like systems, which is like when like your computer runs like multiple processes at once. We basically learned like yeah all this like low level CS shit, which again was like CS 107 part two. And if you watch my uh, first video about my freshman year at Stanford, you know CS 107 like destroyed my freaking soul. So like. Doing the same thing with CS110 was was not fun, and I just remember going to lecture and like I would know I would understand lecture and I'd be like, okay, this makes sense, I'm getting it, and then like I would walk out of lecture, and then like two seconds after I left lecture, I could not for the life of me tell you what I learned. And then when it came time to do the P-sets, I was like, oh, dear God. I was just in office hours all the time, just trying to nail those hints out of those TAs. Like, please, give me the answers, bro. Um, yeah, I don't think anyone likes CS110. This whole, like I said, the whole CS department at Stanford kind of needs, like, a, I don't know. It's It just doesn't, te like, the CS... The CS department at Stanford is not at all like a coding boot camp, which maybe is a good thing, right? Because a coding boot camp, maybe they don't want to be a coding boot camp, right? But the thing about a coding boot camp is that it teaches you practical skills that you'll actually need to to have in the workforce. I feel like the CS department at Stanford was just teaching me all this random esoteric stuff about like computers and like random shit that I would never use in a job. Like, like I don't think. Okay, I, I did learn HTML in one class at Stanford. But, like, if you're going to have a, a, a programming job, I feel like you should know you should know HTML. And the HTML class was, like, an elective. So I'm like, what's going on here, bro? Why is, why is this random, useless crap about MapReduce and thread pools mandatory? And we, and we can't learn shit that's actually going to be relevant when we have jobs i don't know probably because they are they think so highly of themselves that you're know, like oh we're above we're we're here to teach theory we're above we're above teaching you actual practical skills you're gonna learn how to learn i hate that shit bro anyway yeah the other bad thing about cs 110 was that you had to um you had to pass both the midterm and the final in order to pass the class, which meant even if you got 100 on the final and 100 on all the P-sets, but you failed the midterm, you would fail the class, which is very stressful when you go into that midterm because I remember going to that midterm and I opened the midterm and I was like, I have no idea how to answer any of these questions. And I just wrote random shit. I just recalled as many key words that I didn't know the meaning to from all the lectures I had attended and just wrote them down on a piece of paper. And they they gave me partial credit and somehow I passed the midterm and final, but that shit was not easy, bro. So yeah, that class caused me a lot of consternation. I had no idea what was happening. Um, yeah, 
took some other CS classes. I took CS 103. That was fine. I actually did well in CS 103, even though, you know, not to toot my own horn, but most people I talked to had a hard time in CS 103. So, ha ha. I'm a smart dude, apparently. Just kidding. Um, I'm playing Minecraft, and I'm 24 years old. I don't have a job. So, maybe I should have paid more attention in CS 110. Um, oh, 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 fucking die. Fucking die. All right. Oh, did we get a bow? Oh, shit, yeah, bro. Nice. Um, yeah, CS 103, and I also filled up my class with just some random other classes to, like, get the number of units I needed and hit the ways requirements, which I think they were, they might have replaced at Stanford. The ways requirements were just, like, random classes that you had to take to, like, fulfill the liberal arts education. <laughs> so, like, there's a ways for, like, ways, like, was an acronym for something. But basically, you had to, like, take a class in, like, in, like, the realm of ethics and the realm of, you know, diversity. And, like, there were, you know, a bunch of classes that filled those. So I just took two random history classes to fill those and get my units. And that was that. Autumn quarter was mainly an academic quarter for me. Uh, and I didn't really have any friends, like I said. So, yeah, very sad, very sad. Poor, poor introverted madness. Winter quarter was kind of when shit really hit the fan and also when I found my friends, which was good. So winter quarter, I was really going through some personal shit and I was like crying in my room all the time. It was, it was a bad time. I, I, it was a it was a bad time. That's why I needed my bedsheet privacy moment. You know, I know y'all got. Let's just let's just address the elephant in the room. You guys think I had that bedsheet for fappin? It wasn't. All right, it wasn't. It wasn't because of that. It was just because I needed my privacy so I could cry, bro, and not be judged by my roommate. Anyway, um, ew, this is a cool thing. What the heck? You. All right, let's mine this. Anyway, uh, let's get some food first. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I found my friends, but also I was crying a lot. So I was crying a lot, and then luckily, kind of just by serendipity, and if you're watching this video, Jim Bros, uh, shout out to you guys, because you guys really saved me. I really wouldn't be here without you guys, because I was going through a really dark time. Uh, sophomore year and they didn't have any friends like i said so who knows if i would have would have made it out that time but yeah uh this guy i knew from freshman year he i just saw him randomly sitting in the in Ariaga family common family dining commons and i used to see him and then just sitting there and i kind of waved at him you know I, i'd see him eating there sometimes but another ate with him because I felt, like, too awkward to, and I didn't want to, like, you know, interrupt his, like, eating dinner time. I just felt like my presence was, like, a burden. So, like, when I saw that guy I knew from freshman year eating eating by himself at Ariaga, I would just, like, wave them and then, like, go sit somewhere else and not talk to him. Even, even though, like, it, it, that, thinking back on it, that's kind of weird. But, like, I just felt, like, kind of, like, a burden with my presence, and I, I didn't want to do that. But then I think he – I either saw him at the gym – or he came up to me, he definitely came up to me, and he was basically like, hey, uh, you should not be so weird and ignore <laughs> and avoiding me all the time. We can be friends. Do you want to go to the gym with me and my other friend, which is my other gym bro? Um, and I was like, yeah, sure. Um, but that actually really was meaningful to me, even though I don't think I really admitted that to myself at the time. Um... I was like, you know, it, it it was meaningful to me at the time, but like, I definitely looking back on it now with this, with my point of view now, I realized even more how meaningful that was to me because like, like I said, I was in a very dark place. I was crying all the time and I needed, I needed, you know, friends and like something to do with my time and like having these gym bros and going to the gym with them really, really kind of saved me and gave me an outlet, which was good. And... Yeah, uh, my gym bros, they were jacked. I was just a skinny Asian kid who couldn't even bench um, 95 pounds during my freshman year. But guess what? They built me up, bro. 
they they really turned me into a decent gym dude. And even after graduating from Stanford and not having, you know, and my gym bro not, you know, going to school with my gym bros anymore and us, you know, being in different places, I still went to the gym. That's and that's, you know, I, that's a gift they gave me. The gift of the gains. And um yeah, I don't know. If I don't know. I I I don't think it's easy. if you here's what I'll say. If you got if you're a guy or a gal and you need to clear your mind because of life and you're crying all the time, I think going to the gym is a really great way to do that. To to clear your mind and just think about life and be able to focus on a positive positive growth you're making. Not even it's not even about like getting you know, jacked or like super strong or like looking hot. It's just kind of like about like going somewhere where you can like see yourself improve and like get better at something and like just feel good about yourself. I think like as humans, we we crave doing physical things with our bodies and we also crave um, self-improvement. And I think going to a gym is a good way to do that. Um, so yeah, shout out my gym bros. You guys were like my first friends at Stanford, like like two and a half, like a year and a half into my tenure at Stanford. And through my gym bros, I got to meet their friends and I kind of worm, wormed my way into uh, parasitically infiltrating their friend group. Just kidding. Uh, I don't think they would consider me a parasite. That's just a joke. And yeah, that was nice to have those friends and kind of pull myself out of that place. Um, academically, winter quarter, still is booty cheeks. Basically, my entire time until I graduated from Stanford academically would be booty cheeks, save for the um, English classes, the creative writing classes I took at Stanford. I took electrical engineering, which was another fucking crazy class, dude. Um, it wasn't crazy as in like hard, it, it was hard, actually, but, like, you know, um, basically, we had lab in EE. How am I going to get down there? We had lab in EE, and um, my lab was at freaking 8 p.m. at night, which is a crazy time to have class because you eat dinner, you're getting ready to relax for a night, and then you're like, oh, shit, I forgot. I got to go to freaking class right now for two hours. Um, and... Everyone is like kind of tired because we're like, why the fuck are we here at 8 p.m.? But I guess they didn't have enough slots to like do it at the other times. Anyway, um, yeah, the E class itself wasn't that hard. What was fucking hard was the labs where we had to like so I don't I'm not gonna, I'm gonna mispronounce this S O L D E R solder solder that's how you say it. Why is there a silent L in solder? It makes no sense. Anyway, where we had to solder shit. Um, that was crazy, bro. I I really was just like like closing my eyes and praying that I was wiring the wires on the circuit board correctly and like it, it would work out. I remember there was this one lab where we had to make a speaker. It was like the final lab or something. It was the second to last lab where we had to like solder uh, some wires to like make this speaker. And I remember being like, I'm not going to be able to leave this lab. They were like, because like, if you didn't complete a lab, you were not going to pass the class. And I was like, I'm not going to freaking do this. I'm not going to pass this class. And then I just closed my eyes. I prayed. I just randomly soldered wires together following the instructions, but like with no idea whether I was doing it correctly or not. And then the moment of truth came and I plugged. Oh God, this is not a safe place to be. Okay, here we go. I plugged the wires in to like and plugged into my computer and started started playing music and then music came out of the speaker which meant and it was you know it was fuzzy it was grainy but it was really playing that music and i was like oh my god this is this is the best I, the wave of relief that washed over me i like still remember it to this day that song that i played on those freaking speakers i soldered which is um Loving is Easy by Rex Orange County. I remember it to this day, and every time I hear that song, I feel a wave of relief wash over me because I'm a relief that I felt at getting out of that lab. So that was a good class. That was crazy. Um, 
yeah, I took geology one because I had to take a science class, a science elective for the CS degree because CS is in the engineering school and you need to take um, a science class to be an engineer. So I took geology one, rocks for jocks. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to use geology in my computer science career, but I freaking learned um, that you know, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic, baby. And we went on a trip. We went on a field trip for extra credit to, like, see some frickin' rocks. That was cool, I guess. And we ate some round table pizza on that trip. That was a, I, that was a totally repressed memory that I just uncovered at this moment. All right, that's cool. Uh, what else did I take? I took... This random model UN type class. It was called like international security or something. Um, our TA accused me once of not reading the article because my summary of the article wasn't in depth enough, even though I did read the article. That was weird. And we had this model UN ish. What the frick was that? Dude, I don't know what's going on in this new Minecraft shit. Is this. What is this? What is this? Raw copper? What can I make with copper, dude? Damn. Minecraft. We're back, boys, and it's not the not the way it used to be. You're gonna have to hit up the Minecraft wiki after this. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, we had this whole model UN conference thing at the end of that class where basically we had to like we had to like talk about um We just had a whole model UN thing where the topic of the model UN thing was um nuclear the nuclear bombs and i got assigned to be france which is a very actually an important player because it's only it's like one of the only like six countries that have nuclear weapons but i was a little shy boy a little shy boy so all these people all these model un high schoolers were trying to pressure me and i was like mm, i don't know what's going on i don't know why you're trying to talk to me so much so that was interesting um, yeah, we got some snide remarks from some Stanford kids who thought we were high schoolers at Stanford for a Model UN conference. We weren't bitches. We, we were fellow Stanford students, you freaking assholes. But, um, yeah, that was that. All right. So, winter quarter, I made those friends. That was really nice. Uh, really pulled me out of a dark place. And yeah, that was that was that was a nice time. Going it into spring quarter. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to throw in some ambiance things too to like just show you the texture the the texture of my life. I don't know. I just woke up, went to class, went to the gym. Like it tried to avoid my roommate because I felt awkward. <laughs> like I don't know what else I can tell you. Um, yeah. So. I'll just continue with the academics I had for spring quarter. Um, that was probably the chillest quarter I had during my sophomore year. I just took a CS class with Meron, which is, you know, he's he's the dude in the Stanford CS department who's like everyone likes. So that was chill. I took a philosophy class. Um, that, was cr that was crazy. Not really. The only thing I remember from that philosophy class is that my TA said I had a really good final essay and she was attractive so that was cool that this attractive ta said i had a good final essay um yes i also met my other friend who i became close with during junior year with during that full class but i ignored her during full class because i was being mean and an asshole so i'm sorry <laughs> Uh, yeah, and that was a chill class academically. I was still hitting my 20 units and I was on track, you know, to, to do my graduation thing. Um, so yeah, that was chill. Spring quarter is also kind of when I, 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 I had, I, I began my college experience. You know, most people have their college, begin their college experience during freshman year because that's your first year and that's the normal time that to have a college experience i had it during my last quarter of my sophomore year because i had no friends before then but yeah i think i went to my first 
party during my that quarter. I uh, had my first sip of the devil's juice and became, uh, you know, impaired. Would have gotten a DUI if I had a car, but I didn't. So that was good that I didn't get a DUI. Um, not that I would drive all drunk. Don't, dr don't drink and drive. I'm serious. I'm looking at you guys, children and adults. Don't do that. Um, but yeah, parties at Stanford. My first impression was that it was crazy, yo. Like, I think, you know, when you have, when you go to your first party in college, you're going to be like, whoa, this is so cool. There's, like, people, no parents around. There's so many of us. We just do whatever we want to do. We just drink whatever. I have a memory. <laughs> I just rec recovered this repressed memory as well of me at a party, and there's, like, a bottle of, um, whoa, it's like an underwater cave. Um... Me at a party and there was like a bottle of apple cider lying around except at the time i thought it was alcohol so i like picked it up and took a swig from it and these like white girls sorry i shouldn't have said white girls because you know i'm i'm, I'm judging them based on their on their race these girls kind of just looked at me weirdly and like they were like why are you taking a swig from that apple cider bottle that was just randomly lying around you know who's you know whose lips have touched that you might get herpes you know from that shit but i thought it was alcohol i thought i was being so so quirky and cool but i was just being weird um yeah like i said um yeah my first party at stanford all these people dancing on tables. I was like, whoa, look at all these people. They're so quirky, and they're dancing on tables. This is a cool thing. Wow, there's, the music is so loud. Oh, I'm having such a great time. I'm 19 years old. <laughs> um, no, but for real, if you guys, I mean, I think if you're college age, you should go to parties. You should experience them. You should, you should, yeah, have fun. And have the college experience, because... You're not going to have the college experience once you graduate, so you might as well experience it now. And I think it's good to have fun. Like, I don't know why. Like, I think, it, I think it's been built in me as, like, an Asian person that, like, oh, my, like, if you're having fun, like, that's not good. You're, like, you're, 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 you're like, you're spending valuable brain points on something that, like, is not, like, you know, immediately you can derive value from. But I think having fun is important so that you don't freaking go crazy and cry all the time like I was doing during my the beginning of my sophomore year. So yeah, have fun, party. But yeah, I was seeing all these I was like, well, all these people, it's so fun. And then the lights came on and I saw everyone there was just like sweaty. And you, it, yeah, most all the Stanford parties happen when lights are off. And then when they want to kick you out, they turn on the lights, and then you're just kind of like, you're like, whoa, uh, everyone here is sweaty and standing around awkward. It's something about the glare of the lights that, like, really sobers you up really quick. And you're like, oh, shit, I got to get out of here. So you get out of there, you go to you go to TAP or you go to Ariaga late night, but I hear that they're closed now because of COVID. So I'm sorry, people on campus who will never get to experience that. And I guess, actually, I guess there's probably not too many parties on campus, too, because of covid so damn um honestly if you're watching this video and you're a current stanford student you're really not missing out on much i never i never had i never met anyone at any of those parties you know i never had a cool romantic moment with anyone i never had a quirky cool story that i could tell to someone afterwards i just got intoxicated awkwardly shuffled around a bunch of sweaty people for like 45 minutes and then left to go eat some greasy food at tap or or late night so um not missing out on them much i'd say but um but um i feel like that's my signature signature thing but um but um <laughs> um yeah that was parties um I think the only quirky story I can remember, which I don't even think happened during my sophomore year, was that I stole a consent sign. So when you go to a party at Stanford, you have to read this sign of consent, which is basically a sign. You read it before you can 
step foot into the frat or whatever the party space which is the sign basically says consent is verbal affirmation that you're allowed to do whatever you're about to do um mainly in reference to like you know sex um mainly in reference to the whole brock turner thing that happened on campus and i'm actually reading um know my name which is chanel miller's book right now and it's a really good book and it's really as a dude like it really i know i'll never be able to understand like you know the shit that women go through in terms of like sexual assault and like just the the rant like i'll never be afraid to like walk home at 8 p.m at night right i just won't be but like that's a sh and i won't get cat called you know as a guy and like uh, and so it's hard you know but reading know my name helps me at least it really opened my eyes okay so i highly recommend know my name to be read by everyone um what was i saying yeah once i stole a consent sign at the end of a party once like it was over i th it, it was like kind of funny but actually not that funny now that i think about it so <laughs> um that was that um yeah what else i had a trip down to san diego with my gym bro um we'll just give him a name we'll just give him a fake name we'll call him jimbo with my friend Jimbo, we took a trip uh, down to San Diego. That was a fun trip. Uh, we went to the beach, ate some tacos. That was that was good. I needed that, you know. It just felt like a cool. It felt like a cool college young adult experience, cause you know, I never did anything like that where I went somewhere without my parents in high school and like drove ten hours to San Diego. Except I didn't drive because I was a really bad driver back then. So my friend kind of drove the whole way. I took the wheel for like 30 minutes and I almost killed us. And then my friend kind of nicely was like, you know what, I'll drive us. Don't worry about it. He didn't say like, you idiot, get the frick out of my car before you kill us. But um, he drove us down there. So thank you, Jimbro, for doing that. That was a fun trip. I would recommend... Um, yeah, I don't know. If there's one thing I'd recommend is just have a good time. Don't stress about it too much. I think sophomore year is the year when I kind of stopped caring about GPA because freshman year, I kind of had a decent GPA. Sophomore year, I kind of tanked hard, and then I ended up with, like, you know, 3.2 or something, which which isn't even a bad GPA, but I wasn't, you know, going to be, like, a, a an A student or anything, and I was just kind of like, you know what? No one's going to care after I graduate about my GPA, which is true. No one cares. So as long as I passed my classes and got my degree, I was fine with that. So that was good. The summer, or as summer came up, I started to panic again because one, uh, once again, I had procrastinated getting a job uh, or not a job, an internship for that summer. And I was like, God damn, um, I'm a failure. I need to find something to do. So I was just, I remember I was on glass door like all the freaking time during the time between my classes. I was just applying everything. I was like, please, dear God, get me an internship. I remember I got this one call to interview for an internship and it wasn't even like an interview. She was just like, oh, when are you free to like, when are you, would you be free for an internship? And I said, oh, my finals are this day and I'll be free after that, except I think their internship started like two weeks before that. So then I never, she was just like, nope, you're not going to get this internship. Even though I would have been like, hey, I'll, I'll do take my finals early to like take this intern, get this internship. They were, they were just like, not nah, too much work. Get the fuck out of here. So I was really starting to panic. Oh my God. I'm sorry. Young cow child that you had to see me murder someone, murder someone. Um, anyway, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I... Uh, I, have I not been, oh, I haven't picked up seats, nice, um, yeah, I was panicked to find an internship, then by the grace of God, this email lands in my inbox from the Bill Lane Center on campus, which is basically this place, this environmental list research group on campus, and they're like, oh, we're looking for research fellows, and I sent that response email so fast, and then the, the lead researcher brought me in, and she 
you know, she just had talk with me for 30 minutes, and then she was like, yeah, I'd like to offer you this job, and it pays $7,000 for the summer. And I was like, holy shit, thank you, Jesus. I will have something to put on my resume. Thank you. And also, $7,000 is a lot of fucking money, except I had to pay for housing on Sanford campus, and housing was like $5,000, so <laughs> that took a large chunk of my money. But I was just grateful to have something to do over summer, and that I wouldn't just be a bum with no, no experience on my resume. So I'm really grateful to that researcher for giving me that um, that thing. I'm just really grateful to a lot of people for my sophomore year because they really pulled me out of a dark place. Um, I didn't really have the self-worth or self-value back then to do that myself. And I'm still learning how to do that. And I think I'm in a better place now with that. But, like, yeah. I'm really grateful to those people for helping me with that shit and pull me out of there. So, yeah, that was my sophomore year. I think it was, yeah, like I said, probably the most boring year. Like, during my freshman year, I had, I had like, specific stories. During my junior year, I have, like, specific stories that I have to tell that I'll tell in another video. So if you want to hear that, hear me talk about my junior year, leave a comment saying you want to hear it. I'm, tr I'm trying to, like, re this is, like, the third time I've mentioned leaving a comment, and the reason why is because I watched the, like, five-minute YouTube creator, um... YouTube creator videos where they describe like what you can do to like get you know get recommended by the algorithm and they're like oh have your audience leave comments and have them like your video so like I'm trying to like you know Jedi mind trick you guys into doing that except I totally just revealed myself as a fraud so if you want to comment leave a comment leave if you don't you know, don't but yeah if you have any you know, whatever um what was they saying yeah some of you kind of boring because I don't really have any specific stories that I can really point to for my sophomore year but the general vibe was that it was a dark time i entered feeling pretty sad because i had no friends and i was like damn like what am i gonna do this is kind of looking hopeless here and then all these people came to help me freaking the front from like angels sent from heaven so i'm really grateful to those people and yeah that's that um trying to think any last minute advice i have for you guys yeah just chill out man college is not that serious which i know is hard to believe when you're in the moment but um yeah i think it, you gotta enjoy the moment because i don't think i enjoyed the moment enough while i was in college even though i am grateful that i'm no longer in college i should have enjoyed the enjoyable moments more more than focusing on just the parts that I disliked about Stanford. So, yeah. Um, that's that. This is the end of the video. Like I said, uh, leave a comment if you guys have any ideas for Stanford videos or video topics you want me to talk about. I'll probably make a video about housing at Stanford and my junior year and more tier lists of my classes I took at Stanford. Um, maybe I'll make a video ranting about the CS department. Um, but yeah, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, um, subscribe if you want to subscribe, hit that little bell notification to get notified when I post videos if you want to get notified. All that stuff helps uh, to grow the channel, and I really appreciate you guys, and I really love you guys a lot for getting to a thousand subs. Um, yeah, man, this I'm really refining my passion for doing making these videos I feel I feel really and I feel like I'm in a much better place than I was in California so that's good and yeah we got a whole new minecraft world to explore and more and we got we gotta find some therapy topics to discuss in it so yeah hope everyone's doing well hope you guys are staying safe staying sane and I'll catch you guys next time peace